Hey guys, x Ivor here, and I hope you're ready for some more airgun adventures. But first, I want to give you a little sneak peek of my new fill station I got set up. I think you're going to like it. So won't you stick around? We'll go check it out. Like most of you, hand pumping has treated me rather well over the years. Yeah, that's what she said. Actually, that's not what she said. But what she did say is, if I put this picture of her on the internet, I will be hand pumping a little longer than normal. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. I'm running the show around here. But back to the subject at hand. Now, I've had a few hand pumps over the years, and in fact, I still use one of the original ones I purchased, I don't know, what, seven, eight years ago? It's an MK2 hill pump. And aside from a few rebuilds and, you know, keeping up on your dry packs, the thing's been great. Just not ideal. Especially when you want to fill one of these bad boys. But let me show you what is ideal, at least for me. Well, boys, look at that thing rip. That's right, the new F10 shoebox, baby. Now, I don't have a lot of experience with it yet, but I can tell you this much. It took my 18 cubic foot guppy from 0 to 4,500 PSI in an hour and 47 minutes. And do keep in mind, I have a high pressure output filter on here as well that needs to pressurize. So let's shut it down and have a closer look. Now Tom made a few modifications to the F10 and was able to increase the performance by about 20% over its predecessor, the F8. And he did this mainly by increasing the pulley size. He ended up putting a different motor on and upgrading the belt to a higher quality one made by Gates, built right here in the USA. And what he's done here is anodize this block, which from my understanding will help mitigate any galling. And of course, higher output is going to produce more heat. Therefore, more cooling is needed. So what he's done here is added on a high output fan. And if I recall correctly, it's about 100 CFM. And don't quote me on this, but these piston housings, they do appear to be a little larger. I could be wrong. And last but not least, we got ourselves a new sticker. Now let's take a quick look at what this thing feeds on. What I have down here is a cobalt compressor, 155 PSI, 3 gallons. And uh, I have that running at about 125 off the regulator. Coming over here into this little condenser pipe system I built. Hopefully I'll drop out some of the moisture as it chills going up this pipe into this 40 micron water trap filter, a desiccant filter to hopefully bring the dew point down to about minus 40 degrees. A regulator set to 120 PSI and a final output filter to prevent any sneaky sneak from the uh, desiccants getting into my shoebox. And on the high pressure side, I'm coming directly out and into one of JB's high pressure alpha filters. You know, I probably ought to open that up and make sure it's in there. Just kidding, Joe. I trust you. After all, you make my hoses. And from there, into my beloved guppy. That, my friends is the cat's meow. Ain't that right? Oh, did I show you the best part after a complete fill? No moisture. At least not that I can see. Well boys, there you have it. A quick look at my current fill station. And if you have any questions, or input for that matter, please leave them in the comments below. And when I get a better handle on fill times, I'll post those in the description so you guys can gauge how fast this thing really is. And as always, until next time, Exiver, out.